no matter how things look, God is still with us. In Acts chapter 28, the last chapter of the book of Acts, Paul finds himself in trouble again. It seems like there's always something. First the shipwreck, and then he's imprisoned and waiting to go to trial. In the midst of troubles, we need to be aware that God is hes always there. Trouble comes and trouble goes, but God is always there. He's still in control. Paul's shipwreck was not a mistake. There were miracles to be done and people to be healed and people to be saved. And so with the shipwreck, Paul was able to go to an island that otherwise he wouldn't have gone to. They would have bypassed. God takes us through tough times, sometimes to show us right where we can serve, where we can go to people. Put us in contact with people that need ministering to. Those that made it to shore were wet and miserable. And so the natives of the island began to build a fire where they could warm themselves and begin to dry off and be more comfortable. They built a large fire. And they were the prisoners were gathered around as well as the sailors. And you know what usually happens when you think, well, can things get any worse? And then they did. Paul was picking up some wood to put on the fire, and a snake came out and bit him. It was a poisonous snake that the towns, the, the nationals there were familiar with, and very poisonous that somebody would die within seconds. And Paul just shook the snake off in the fire. So then the people began to think that maybe he was more than just a man if he could, not, if he could survive a snake bite. Well, they say that no good deed goes unpunished. And there was Paul trying to help, and something bad happened. The people that lived on the island began to see Paul in a different light. They saw that maybe he was more than a man. And at first they thought, well, justice is, fine, is, is happening. He must be a murderer or something, and he escaped the storm, but he's still facing the death of the snake. But then when he shook the snake off and nothing happened, they begin to think, well, maybe he's a god. And so they began to watch him, and nothing happened, and they concluded that he was a god. Well, Paul established among these people that didn't know anything about Jesus his authority to speak to them. And with shaking the snake off was something that got their attention. He didn't set out to handle snakes. That wasn't his intent. He wasn't trying to have some kind of a show or some kind of something to get their attention and, and um, have opportunity. It happened. It just happened. But he used it. We can use our circumstances to tell people about the Lord. We can use our talents. Whatever you can do, you can use that as a way to tell people about your Savior, about Jesus. In verse 8, the official that was the head official on the island, his father was sick. And so Paul was asked to go to him. And he went to him and prayed that God would heal the man. Paul didn't act like he could turn the power of God on and off. He just prayed about it and God showed him the direction to go. He only acted after he determined the will of God in that situation. And so Paul ministered to people. He told them about Jesus and the sick were healed. In verse 8 and 9, the others that were on the island that were sick is always sick, began to come to Paul and want him to heal them too. When Paul healed the father of the leader of the island, he used a word that meant instantaneous healing. When he ministered to the other townsfolk, he used a word that meant gradual healing or natural healing. And it was a blend of medical skill and God's help, divine healing. Apparently, Luke, the physician, was there ministering to people with his skills and his knowledge. And the healing came by God, but it was through the conventional means of medicine that Luke could provide. In verse 10 through 16, Paul didn't choose his path. It seems like it was chosen for him. God may not choose to work out his plans in our life the way we envision or think he should, but he works them out the way that's best. I would never have dreamed that I would have been on the journey I've been on in my 40 years of the ministry. It's been interesting. 
There were, have been rewarding days. There have been very trying days. Some were very stressful. But God is blessed through that time. I suspect that Paul had his own expectations about how he would arrive in Rome. He probably thought he'd be a straight journey, no problems, and maybe met by some of the Christians there. God sent Paul just what he needed. When Paul saw the people that uh, were there at the dock when he arrived, and they were still about 120 to 130 miles from Rome, but when he saw the people at the dock, he thanked God and gained courage. We encourage one another when we're there to support one another. It, it may not have been what Paul expected, but it was according to God's plan. God sent some encouragement. In verse 17 through 31, we have the background for being faithful to the end. We're called to be faithful to the end. Don't give up. Don't say it's too hard. Don't think you can quit. Keep serving God. You may serve in a different way. We sometimes outgrow the ability to do certain things. I can't play with preschoolers on the floor much anymore, but other younger people can. But I can do some things that I couldn't do before. And that's amazing. When Paul arrived, he began with the Jews. He began to tell them about what he was about and what had happened. He invited the Jewish leadership to come by and see him. He was chained to a guard. He was jail so he couldn't go to them and he simply explained his predicament he said that he was an innocent victim of a strange hostility among the jewish people and leadership in jerusalem and he appealed to caesar and so there he was in rome he said the real reason he was in chains is because he declared that jesus is the hope of israel the messiah they decided they would hear him at a further date putting it off some people put it off accepting Jesus until it's too late. Don't be guilty of that. Trust the Word of God. Live by the Word of God. Act on it today. Don't wait until another day. The story of the second meeting begins in verse 23. The end result was in verse 24. And some were persuaded by the things which were spoken, and some disbelieved. Isn't that the story of our world? We tell the gospel, we tell the good news, the hope that's within us, the hope of eternal life, and some will believe and put their faith in Jesus, and others will scoff and make fun and say it isn't so. They choose to live their own way. The Jews began to disagree among themselves. Some of them believed, and apparently convinced by his teaching, um, and then others didn't. They weren't convinced. The book of Acts ends by saying, Paul dwelt two years in his own rented house and received all who came to him. His ministry never stopped. He was faithful to the end. Faithful to the end is more than just attending church every week. Faithful to the end is serving God until he takes you home. We have a call on our life. First to salvation. Have you trusted in Jesus as your Savior? And then if you've trusted in him and you live for him, then we live to serve him. And that service is our calling. Some are served to preach. Some are, are called to teach or to go as missionaries. Others are called to be musicians and take the gospel by means of music to the world. Others are called for other things, but we're called to a lot of different things. Some people are called to a secular field, but to take Christ into the workplace. And so find where you're called and serve God there. If you're retired, you have more opportunity to serve than you had before. Take advantage of that to serve God. If you like to travel, then you can be a traveling missionary you can tell people about Jesus as you travel in your time. And God will bless that. But find what God has called you to. Do what God is calling you to do. Never quit. Remain in touch with God through his word and prayer. Remain in touch with the world by telling others about the Savior, the hope that's within you. We don't condemn the world, but we pray for the world and take a good news of hope to the world. Jesus came... The first time to bring redemption. And that's what we do. We take the words of redemption to the world. Jesus will come again the second time in judgment. And he'll take us home to be with him. The days seem dark. But the days have more opportunity now than we've had before. To spread the good news of Jesus Christ. We do it packaged in the love of Christ. 
to a world in darkness, world without hope. Continue being faithful. Be faithful to the end.